Good morning. And welcome to today's oversight hearing on career services and job placement at CUNY. I'm Councilmember Inez Barron, the committee chair of the Committee on Higher Education and a proud CUNY alum. This, yep, no, we're not supposed to do that, so we, we do this, the sign language. This is the first time the committee is hearing a topic specific to the services CUNY provides for student career planning and job placement. The topic is timely and perhaps even overdue. There is an immeasurable value to higher education. Apart from the knowledge accumulated through academic study, numerous studies have shown that a post-secondary credential improves access to desirable job opportunities and increases the probability of upward social mobility. Prospects that build and increase incomes, support families, and propel low-income students into the middle class. However, more often than not, it takes more than just a degree to connect students to career opportunities. This is especially true for students like many of those who attend CUNY who lack networking connections to employers that are common among wealthier, whiter, and less diverse students from elite institutions of higher education. A strong career planning office is therefore essential to assisting lower income students developing such connections and adequately prepare for opportunities that can lead to gainful and fulfilling employment. With one of the most diverse student populations in the world, CUNY strives to fulfill its legislatively mandated mission to be an integrated system of higher education that serves as, quote, a vehicle for the upward mobility of the disadvantaged in the city of New York. In furtherance of this mission, we know that CUNY generally offers resources to aid students seeking postgraduate employment. And I'm looking forward to learning about these resources and their outcomes. But there also appears to be inequities from campus to campus in terms of services that are provided. For example, Baruch College offers students a mobile application described as on-the-go employment tool that helps students search and apply for jobs. RSVP for recruiting, for recruiting events and among other features connect with employers before, during, and after career fairs. Baruch also, like most if not all other CUNY schools, offers resume preparation services, mock interviewing, and online career guides. In contrast, Gutman Community College has a hard-to-find student opportunities webpage sponsored by its Office of Partnership and Community Engagement that very generally describes offered services. It lacks resource links, guides, and even information about the office's hours of operation. And while the bulk of senior and community colleges offer basic career resources, the disparity of these offerings and the varying degrees of their visibility on college websites seems to belie CUNY's mission as an integrated institutional vehicle for upward mobility. Indeed, CUNY has an obligation to help students find meaningful employment through resource promotion and visibility, career awareness, and employer recruitment, for example. CUNY must also track resource outcomes so that it can gauge the success of its resource strategies and develop ways to improve them. This is what we intend to explore today during today's hearing, and I'm looking forward to hearing from CUNY on this important topic. I want to acknowledge my colleagues on Higher Education Committee who are present, and that's uh, Council Member Ben Kalos. I would also like to thank Joy Simmons, my Chief of Staff, Indigo Washington, my CUNY liaison and Director of Legislation, Chloe Rivera, the, the committee's policy analyst, Paul Sinegov, and Yariv Shavit, the committee's new finance analyst. Now I will ask the uh, council to administer the oath. Good morning. Please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council members' questions? Please state your names for the record. Thank you so much, and you may begin with your testimony. Thank you, Chair Barron. Good morning, Chair Barron and Council Member Kalos. Thank you for the opportunity. Let me just read the names again, sure. because I want to give you your positions. Sure. Christopher please. Rosa, who is the Interim Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at CUNY. Zena Richardson, who is the University Director of Career Services and Professional Development at CUNY. Katie Naylor, who is the Director uh, for Career and Professional Development Institute at City College of CUNY 
and Angie Kamath, who is the University Dean of Continuing Education and Workforce Programs at CUNY. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Barron. And again, thank you for the opportunity uh, this morning to appear before the Higher Education Committee and present testimony on career services and job placement at CUNY. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Chris Rosa, and I'm honored to serve as CUNY's Interim Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Uh, our Central Office of Student Affairs is responsible for the stewardship and development of CUNY's network of campus-based career services centers. At CUNY, we take great pride in the university's role in helping generations of low-income, first-generation college-educated, underserved, and immigrant students succeed. CUNY's commitment to the career development of its students, thank you, is an important dimension of our holistic commitment to their success. Um, as you mentioned, I'm very proud to be joined today by my colleagues, Angie Kamath, University Dean for Continuing Education and Workforce Development, Zena Richardson, University Director of Career Services, Katie Naylor, Director of the City College Career Services Office and Co-Chair of the Career Services Association of CUNY, our true content experts when it comes to career readiness and career success at the university. To quote our university interim chancellor, Dr. Vita Rabinowitz, with social mobility increasingly used to determine which colleges are contributing most to the American dream, CUNY's singular quality, affordability, and diversity set it apart as perhaps the most potent engine of economic advancement in the United States. In light of our abiding commitment to social mobility through higher education, we were proud to learn that nine senior colleges and two community colleges at CUNY, again, dominated the Chronicle of Higher Education's rankings of public U.S. campuses with the greatest success in lifting low-income students into the middle class. Indeed, our network of campus-based career services centers is among the key factors that give CUNY the capacity to serve as an unprecedented engine of social mobility. CUNY's 2016 to 2020 master plan, The Connected University, emphasizes that as the 21st century labor market has become increasingly complex and technological advances have speeded up the pace of change in specific occupations, CUNY has expanded its services and support to students, graduates, and employers around career preparation and success with the goals of improving job career outcomes for students and better meeting employer needs. Towards these ends, CUNY's career services centers are dedicated to educating, advising, and connecting students to career and postgraduate opportunities. Our goal is to provide comprehensive services that help students apply their academic knowledge and personal values to the world of work or postgraduate study. These centers assist students, as well as CUNY alumni, with all phases of their career development. CUNY has 27 career centers across 24 campuses. The career services centers are staffed by professionals with expertise in the areas of career advising, employer relations, and information technology. At many colleges, there are advisors who specialize in work with students majoring in different disciplines, including business, humanities, and STEM. Several campuses offer evening and weekend hours. All career centers assist students with getting internships as well as postgraduate employment. Career centers offer early career exploration, career coaching, resume and cover letter reviews, mock interviews, career events, career resource libraries, mentorship, professional development, job and internship searches, career action plans, and personal branding. In addition, CUNY's career services offices link students to co-curricular experiential opportunities and thereby help students to transform academic knowledge into human capital that readies them for competitive employment. Another core responsibility for CUNY's career centers is connecting with and providing services to employers. Campus career centers create many different kinds of opportunities for employers to interact with students. Career centers offer employ, uh, resume referrals, organize job fairs, information sessions, uh, company visits, and interviewing on campus, and offer access to free online 
job and internship databases. In addition, approved employers are able to search databases created by the colleges that contain student resumes so that employers can identify students who possess the qualifications and skills they're seeking. CUNY's master plan also emphasizes the importance of digital resources. Career support is an essential element of student services. CUNY's college career centers will expand the use of digital resources to improve the flow of information about job growth areas, internships, and employment opportunities. Our career services leverage technology in order to scale their services to serve more of CUNY's more than 270,000 students. All centers use online job posting systems. Many leverage ePortfolio with digital badging to validate skills acquisition, digital tutorials, web-based career counseling, career webinars, and virtual interview preparation. Career centers throughout CUNY rely on technologies that provide an avenue to market uh, job and internship opportunities. All centers use job posting systems uh, online, including Simplicity, a career services management tool, and online job database. Most campuses also use Vault, an industry exploration platform that helps students check out thousands of resumes, ratings, and job and internship posts. Furthermore, CUNY is in the process of procuring a digital enterprise solution career services platform that will empower CUNY to better leverage all career services assets across our system to connect our talented students to career opportunities. This system will also be forward-facing to employers, allowing them to post job openings directly so that they can be accessed directly by student candidates across our university. In closing, CUNY's career services centers play an essential role in career development, empowering students to develop those aspects of their identities that are related to work, helping them to link what they're learning in the classroom to a range of possible career pathways, and raising their career aspirations. Through this process, our career services prepare CUNY's extraordinarily talented and diverse candidates to take their rightful place in the workforce of our city, state, country, and indeed around the world. Thank you again very much for this opportunity uh, to speak, as well as your ongoing commitment to the City University of New York. It's now my pleasure uh, to introduce my colleague, Zena Richardson, who will highlight in richer detail CUNY's commitment to career services. Zena, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, Chairperson Barron, members of the Higher Education Committee, staff and guests. Thank you for convening this oversight hearing on CUNY Career Services and Job Placement. My name is Zena Richardson and I am the University Director for Career Services at the Central Office of Student Affairs at the City University of New York. CUNY has 27 career centers across 24 community and senior colleges and serves as an educational partner within this CUNY system. One of the most important principles in which, on which our services are based is our commitment to preparing students to make informed decisions about majors and careers, all while empowering them to develop and achieve their professional aspirations. Students are taught how to effectively market themselves and gain the confidence, skills, and knowledge needed to be career ready in today's global workforce. No career center is successful without the benefits of key partnerships and collaborations. We are working to assure that each center is developing sustainable partnerships with alumni relations, fundraising and development, admissions, academic advising, selected faculty, researchers, workforce development, student clubs and organizations, and institutional research and assessment. Our career centers offer a suite of services that include individualized career coaching and assessment, as well as strategic workshops and training that assist students and alumni in building career skills through personal branding, mock interviewing, and effective communication and networking. We place emphasis on the career preparation work we do with students and alumni as much as on employment outcomes. We follow the principles for employment professionals of the National Association of Colleges, of College and Employers, NACE, the organization that governs the profession of career services professionals. 
These guidelines work to help both students and employers get the most of the most of the recruitment process. Practices must be fair to the students eager to be considered for an opportunity within an organization. Each of our 27 career centers coordinate with employers and industry professionals to come to campus for on-campus recruiting activities, conduct corporate site visits, organize speaker panels, executive mentoring and networking events, as well as posting thousands of jobs and internships on each month on the campus career management system. In general, the career centers strive to expand the targeted focus of employers to include more students rather than fewer. Keep in mind, career services is optional for students and alumni. Services are advertised through social media outlets, individual campus websites, in-class presentations, freshman orientation, weekly emails, and student clubs and organizations. Career centers have increasingly been called upon to do more in helping produce the successful career outcomes of our graduates. We respond to numerous requests for assistance, such as providing candidates for the 311 and NYCHA call centers, interviewing and selecting students to participate in the America Needs You Fellows Program, an intensive two-year program for high-achieving, low-income, first-generation college students, the Clinton Global Initiative Internship Program, the Seek CD Internship Program, and work closely with DCAS and the Administration for Children's Services to streamline the application process for CUNY students. The Central Office of Student Affairs support the career centers by providing value-add resources, information, and services. We recognize the ongoing need to prepare students for lifelong learning, as well as the need to increase the number of internship coordinators, career coaches, and industry liaisons that assist and mentor our students daily. Over the past 10 years, our office has funded the Vault.com platform, an influential rankings, ratings, and review of thousands of top employers and internship programs across the country. This past spring, we funded three borough-wide industry career fairs, an opportunity for students across the CUNY system to come together and engage, and engage with employers. These events yielded over 700 student participants. In addition, we partner with the National Association of Colleges and Employers to fund ongoing professional development training for our diverse career services staff that lead to credentialing and certification. In partnership with University Workforce Development, we are now in the process of securing a university-wide RFP for a unified, a uniformed career management system that will manage, collect, and report on internship and employment data, industry engagement, and outreach efforts. The Career Services Association of CUNY is the professional association of career services professionals from the senior community graduate schools and the CUNY central office. We share information about best practices and collaborate with each other on various career-related presentations and projects. Katie Naylor is the director for the Career and Professional Development Institute at the City College of New York and co-chair of CSAC. Katie will provide more information on the role of CSAC and detailed data points on the services and resources available at our career centers. Katie? Good morning, Chairperson, Baird, and the members. And the members of the Higher Education Committee. I am Katie Naylor, co-president of the Career Services Association of CUNY, also known as CSAC, and director of the Career and Professional Development Institute at City College of New York. Thank you for the opportunity to pr provide an overview of the services offered at the career centers across CUNY. CSAC is comprised of 27 career services offices across CUNY, where the directors meet monthly to coordinate career service efforts on the campuses as well as plan professional development opportunities for their staff. Every three years, the Career Services Association of CUNY conducts a survey of the 27 career centers within CUNY to report on the different activities, budget, and staffing that are present at the different campuses. This is not a required survey for a campus to complete. 
The most recent survey was conducted during the summer of 2018, where 21 of the 27 career centers completed the survey. This is it is important to note that activities and services do vary between campuses due, due to the needs of the students of a particular campus or staffing and financial resources available to a particular campus. My testimony will reflect information gathered in the survey regarding the services provided. All the career centers offer career counseling appointments, career workshops, and internship assistance. 80% offer career assessment tools and host general career fairs, while over 70% offer drop-in career counseling, career resource library, and work with academic departments. And 62% of the career centers host specialized career fairs. Other additional services some campuses offer include virtual career counseling, four credit career classes, coordinated work study program, credential filing, leadership and professional development programs. Last, 67% of the career centers manage an internship program. All career centers assist students with getting internships. All the campuses assist students with getting internships through resume critiques, cover letter reviews, and interview prep. These same activities are also offered to those students seeking full-time employment. Additional assistance provided by a majority of the campuses includes employer recruitment events and an online internship database. Other assistant, other assistant campuses indicated includes mentorship programs, LinkedIn profile assistance, employer referrals, employer site visits, and workshops. The campus career centers are also involved in other career services related programming outside of the student and employer activities and services. All of the career, all the campus career centers indicated that they are involved in new student orientation. 95% of the career centers serve alumni. 62% of the career centers are involved in the collection of postgraduate outcomes for their college. 35% of the career centers are also involved in fundraising, internship grants, CUNY EDGE, curriculum design, and graduate school planning advising. 24% are involved in faculty development and transfer advising. In addition to the services offered to students, all CUNY career centers offer services to employers to recruit students to their job and internship opportunities. At a minimum, the career center has an online job database for employers to post opportunities. Based on their indicated numbers, the senior colleges serving more than 10,000 students had an average of 4,658 jobs posted in the 2017-2018 academic year, while junior colleges serving more than 10,000 students had an average of 1,315 jobs posted in the 2017-2018 academic year. Based on their indicated numbers, senior colleges serving more than 10,000 students had an average of 2,083 internships posted in the 2017-2018 academic year, while junior colleges serving more than 10,000 students had an average of 312 internships posted in the 2017-2018 academic year. In addition to posting opportunities, over 90% of the 21 career centers offer information sessions and contributing to mock interviews as an employer service. 80% further offer participation in networking events and over 70% each also offer interview days, participation in career panels, and tabling. 95% of the colleges offer career fairs to their students. In the academic year 2017-2018, the mean total number of students attending the career fairs hosted by a career center is 1,166 students. All these events, services, and activities do get marketed to students. When marketing services and events to students, all the career centers utilize email, emails to students and enlisting the assistance of faculty to notify students. More than 90% use flyers and posters posted around campus in addition to social media platforms. 85% of the campuses partner with other departments, enlist the assistance of academic advisors to notify students, 
and notify student clubs and organization at the colleges. 50% make short classroom presentations to market services and events to students. Other options utilized by specific career centers include using texting, information posted on TV monitors in the office and on campus, taking their office out into the hallways, or weekly newsletters, videos, and blogs. These marketing strategies do vary among campuses due to the evaluation of their effectiveness given the student population and staff res staffing resources. In the academic year of 2017-2018, the mean total of students attending all events hosted by a career center except for career fairs at each campus is 2,587. The number of student attendee ranges from 158 to 9,100 per campus. I hope my testimony has provided you with a strong understanding of the services offered by the CUNY Career Centers. I will now introduce Angie Kamath, the University Dean of Continuing Education and Workforce Development. Thank you, Katie. Good morning, Chair Barron. Um, I'm really pleased to be here today with my colleagues and um, uh, to talk to you a little bit more about our work. We wanted to share this morning um, the work that our team is involved in, um, in what we call, uh, that we call uh, CUNY Career Success Initiatives. Um, CUNY, as you had noted, has long been an engine of career mobility for its students. Uh, we also know from insights from our industry partners that our students really can benefit from a more intentional approach to creating strong career foundations um, for uh, their work. The CUNY Career Success Initiatives provide funding, resources that can bring together faculty, career services um, staff, and student affairs professionals, academic advisors, and other university staff to create a comprehensive model that supports CUNY students throughout their academic journey, and that connects their academic pursuits with opportunities to build and explore their career interests. Our objective is to make it possible for every CUNY campus to take advantage of shared technologies that we've heard a little bit about from my colleagues, innovations, resources, and best practices to support the career needs of CUNY students, no matter their academic focus or status. In 2017, Interim Vice Chancellor Rosa and I began working together to plan and implement a set of initiatives from CUNY's strategic framework that aim to improve college access and readiness, increase graduation rates, and give graduates better tools for achieving career success. Members of the planning team involved faculty and staff from a variety of colleges as well as the central office. We also held focus groups with students to gain dire um, feedback directly about their experiences. The team has been engaged in developing a new career success strategy at the university that addresses experiential learning, instructional design, and employment. CUNY has identified 12 key New York City industry sectors to focus on um, for this career success work. Um, these sectors include the art and creative sector, education, energy, finance, healthcare, hospitality, the industrial and construction sector, life sciences, nonprofit and community organizations, the public sector and government agencies, technology and transportation sectors. The key goals of this new strategy include an intentional employer engagement um, strategy with a sectoral focus. Um, within this, we're going to build university-wide capacity to organize students, employers, and faculty in professional development um, activities that are really specific to these key sectors. We are working to create a clear entry point to CUNY for employers um, that makes it easier for employers to connect with relevant academic programs and well-prepared students wherever they are enrolled across our campuses. The second goal of the strategy is to increase hands-on learning for students. We want to ensure that CUNY students have developed and practiced foundational, transferable, and career readiness skills. We want to ensure that we have an increasing number of paid internship placements and full-time employment placements um, for students. We want to make it easier for all students across the university to find career coaching and preparation opportunities and to access opportunities that are relevant to their chosen career path. The third goal of this new strategy is to have industry-informed academic programs and coursework. We are cultivating ongoing partnerships between employers and CUNY faculty um, and academic programs to enhance curriculum, expand student skill sets to meet job market demand, and ultimately to place more students into internships and jobs. And finally, the fourth goal of this new strategy is to create system-wide infrastructure and assessment tools. We've heard from my colleagues about creating a centralized data and evaluation system that can really track um, uh, learning, uh, employment, and wage outcomes. And then secondly, we really want to focus on building up the infrastructure for sustainable funding for this work. 
Over the past year, we've awarded 21 schools grants to improve job outcomes for students, ensure that curriculum reflects the job market, and, help, and to help prepare students for the world of work. Projects that we funded include um, uh, opportunities to improve the transfer student career preparation, to infuse advising with more career-focused content, and to work directly with faculty to enhance their coursework and um, to assess all students on their career readiness. These are great ideas. We want to support them and scale up the great work that's happening at CUNY campuses, hopefully CUNY-wide. This work is important, and we have a clear body of research that really informs our approach. Um, as you stated, Chair Barron, we know um, from the data that young people with bachelor's degrees um, are paid higher wages, have lower rates of unemployment, and are less likely to live in poverty compared with those who only have a high school diploma. Over the past 50 years, we know that a greater share of jobs in the U.S. have demanded a post-secondary credential, and this trend is projected to continue. And we know that by 2020, 65% of all jobs will require post-secondary education, um, up from a mere 28% you know, just a few decades ago. We know this, but we also know that substantial disparities, as you noted, in economic returns to higher ed persist by gender and by race. And so on average, women still earn an estimated 25% less than men over the course of their lifetimes. And across all levels of educational attainment, the earnings of African Americans and Latinos are considerably less than those of their white and Asian counterparts. Additional recent uh, research highlights the importance of, first quali of high quality first jobs and the pitfalls of underemployment among recent college graduates. The Burning Glass um, report from earlier this year shared that um, a sample of workers found that a considerable number, 43% of um, recent grads were underemployed in their first job. And for those who were underemployed in their first job, they were five times more likely to remain underemployed five years later than workers who were not. The initial rates and long-term effects of underemployment were really more pronounced among w uh, women and men. So again, this speaks to why our work is so important and why we really have to build um, opportunities and access to our students. The City University of New York is well positioned to address these challenges and to not only provide our students with high quality education, but to also prepare, to, uh, prepare them to succeed in the labor market. Um, we know, as Chris, uh, as Vice, excuse me, interim Vice Chancellor Rosa noted, that um, uh, we have a really important um, uh, contribution to make to economic mobility of low-income New Yorkers. Um, we have also worked on uh, large at-scale internship programs, um, like the CUNY Service Corps, the Cultural Corps, the STEM internships with the call centers that my colleague Zena Richardson noted. Um, and these uh, programs serve over 1,500 students each year in paid work experiences. We have over 6,000 students um, participating in career exploration activities in this past year in the areas of technology, finance, digital marketing, and social justice and government sector uh, related areas. We've hired a team of business outreach staff who work with employers to market our talented, motivated, and diverse student body. Uh, and this is incredibly important so that we can make um, our talent more accessible by making it easier for employers to access our students. Um, we know that we need to invest in new and improved data sources and practices so that students can be informed and make informed choices. Uh, we know that and, and we plan to update and share labor market trends um, and demands with students uh, as well. And then finally, we'll, we will continue to structure career readiness activities um, in collaboration with career services centers into the pathways um, uh, towards a CUNY degree. So again, making sure that um, career-related activities aren't kind of a side um, activity, but really are embedded in the academic experience. And so expanding experiential learning and focusing on transferable skills and courses are important, increasing opportunities for internships, supporting the construction and use of student networks and career exploration, and finally, um, helping students to build their social networks, which will play a positive role in employment and career attainment. Um, there's a lot of work happening and a lot of coordination across campuses and within CUNY Central. Uh, we have seen a new energy and interest in, ensure, in ensuring that our students and graduates are, are well prepared to have access to strong economic mobility. We appreciate your interest, Chair Barron, and the Council's interest in our work, and we hope that we may find ways to work together to help more and more New Yorkers. Thank you. Wow, that's a lot of information. <laughs> Thank you so much to the panel for bringing all of this information to us. And uh, we do have some questions that we want to ask of you to help us to further expand our understanding of the services that are provided. So in your testimony, reference was made to the fact that there are 27 career centers across 24 campuses. Mm -hmm. So who doesn't have and why? Mm -hmm. 
Well, we, we all have um, the discrepancy. So, well, actually, okay. we have Baruch College that has four right. distinct centers. So we we each have a, se a center or a service at, at, at every location. Okay, so there are 24 campuses. I keep getting 24, 25. There are 25 campuses. Well, New Medical School is the 25th. Oh, okay. Yes. So the medical school, I think, mm -hmm. is the one that doesn't have a career services. They okay. The straight line trajectory to we, uh, we right, actually we serve the medical students at yes. City College. Okay. They use so our they services. use City College services. Yes. That's yeah. fine. Okay. And you talk about um, the services that you provide and uh, mock interviewing, effective information, uh, effective communication, networking, and talk also about about mentoring, professional mentoring. How does that work? How do you get, I guess it's faculty to mentor students. I think that that's really an important part. Some of the campuses do have a mentoring program um, at various levels. Um, and I think that number was 60%, so it's not at every CUNY campus, mm -hmm. um, because there is a lot of work that goes into a mentoring program, mm -hmm. from preparing the mentors and preparing the mentees. Um, I can speak to City College. Um, we mm -hmm. do have a mentoring program for our, our participants in our Explorer program, um, where they communicate with alumni and the alumni assist the students, and that is generally how it is done within the career centers that have mentoring programs. It is normally an alumni that is mentoring the student, or it may be an employer partner um, that is mentoring the student. Okay. How many, I, know, I understand this is uh, not required, students don't have to avail themselves of the services. So how do you determine the number of staff that's needed at a particular center, and what's the range of staff that is at each of your centers? Um, that number varies per, per campus. I can provide you with those exact numbers. Um, that is a number that we collect from our survey. Um, so I can provide you with that detailed information um, after. Um, as far as de deciding on the number of staff, that is once again, a per college decision. Who's the person in charge of a particular center? What's that title? Who's that person? It's, it's normally, the, it, normally the titles range from director to executive director. Um, we are provided with a budget from a particular, you know, however the budget is determined. Um, but the, the um, title is normally director or executive director. I believe on average, just and this is just from going over the report data, um, on average, every center has um, four full-time staff members, the average. Four, on average. Okay, on average, yes, that's, an a, that's on average. And how's the funding determined? How, do, how does each center get their allocation? Who makes that funding? allocation? Who makes that determination as to how much money each center is going to get? Does every center get the same amount or are there other factors that go into determining how much a center would receive? Chair Barron, that those decisions are made by the individual campuses. So the president? By, by the college president. College president. And, and the vice president. Typically the, either the vice president of student affairs, academic affairs, or the dean of adult and continuing education depending on where career services is situated on the campus. Okay. And how can we determine uh, the utilization rate? I heard in part someone's testimony that you were looking to uh, use a new system that would help you gather the data and report it. How are we presently doing it? How do we now know the number of students that any given center provide services to? That's done at each center, um, and because we push the survey through the Career Services Association through CSAC, um, each center collects its own data on student usage, and that's how we have the numbers that we were able to provide you with today. If, if I can also add, mm -hmm. uh, each center is using um, a career management system. Mm -hmm. It's simplicity is what we're using right now, and that system holds all of the data per campus. So we know how many students are coming in, how many students are utilizing the workshops, 
how many students are interviewing, how many students have come back several times to interview, and how many employers are actually in, a, in the system at each college. So we do have a system in place. We're looking to expand on that and have a, a more of a broader system that everyone could use. But right now, 95% of the campuses are using the career management system. All right, and so can we get that information? We'd like to be able to see how those services are being utilized. Are students throughout the system, throughout CUNY campuses allowed to use services at any other campus? Or are they restricted to use it only at their home school? They can use services at other campuses. We do not turn away um, a student from another campus. Um, because there are different majors. So for example, um, New York City Tech, they may want to take advantage of our STEM career fair. Um, they would be able to come to that event. We, so it depends also by major. Um, it may be appropriate for a student to visit another campus as opposed to their home campus. Um, they might have a stronger employer relations um, uh, connection. Um, so we don't turn away a student from another CUNY campus. And are the services generally the same with community college campuses as with senior colleges, or would you find that there's a distinction or difference? Or They're, The basic services are the same um, in regards to the career coaching, the interview prep. Um, there would be different uh, services um, because the community college student is a little bit different. Um, Lisa, Nett, do you want to speak to services at a community college? Yes, yeah. um, the, uh, chair Barron, uh, this is Lisa Nett Rosario. Um, mm -hmm. She is the, the co-chair of CSAC and the director of career services at Hostos Community College. Okay, the council is just going to administer the oath. Can you raise your right hand, please? Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee, and to respond honestly to council members' questions? Yes. Please state your name and title for the record. Lisa Nat Rosario, Director of Career Services at Hostos Community College. Yeah, so the diversity among the community colleges and the work we do, um, there may be some differences in terms of the workforce development activities. We are a lot more hands-on in terms of our students who are graduating into uh, careers, vocational programs. Uh, we also work with students in certificate programs. Um, so we do a lot of employer recruitment and direct referral. Uh, we host a lot of um, on-campus events that are open to other community colleges and senior colleges. So although the basic services, resume development, interviewing, career fairs, you will find are the same across campuses, um, some individual community colleges are more hands-on in terms of the referral to employers um, and direct work um, in building capacity for employers. And in uh, the testimony, it said that at the four-year schools that had 10,000 or more, there were 4,658 job postings, and at the two-year schools, it was 1,315 job postings. So if the same number of students or 10,000 was your base number, what accounts for the differences in the number of postings, almost three times as much? I think that that reflects national data in regards to the demand, employer demand for the four-year degree. Uh, Chair Barron, I think it also mm -hmm. speaks to our acknowledgement that we could benefit from a singular unified enterprise management tool that we that we're uh, in the process of. And what's the name now. of that tool that you're talking? About? It's yet to be. The, we're 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 compete. We're they're competing for okay. it now. So you put out an RFP. Yes, okay. and and we we hope to procure a single unified platform so that all students could benefit from all postings across the system. And so, where are you in that timetable of having that done? You have to speak into the oh, microphone, sorry. so okay. it's got to be able to be recorded sufficiently. Yeah. Um, sorry, Chair Barron. That's okay. Um, 
uh, we have written the RFP and it's in the midst of a procurement process and kind of getting all of the internal approvals before it'll be released, but we do hope within the next quarter um, to have that uh, released and out in the street. How do we know, how do we measure the effectiveness of the career job center, of the career centers? How are we measuring our effectiveness? That is also campus-based. Um, there, of course, there are employment outcomes that um, we're getting data now through partnerships with the New York State Department of Labor. Um, but each career center does assessment on their services and their effectiveness. Um, I do not have that data with me today. Um, we could contact the the career centers to try and get additional data with that. So if I go to a job center and I see a job posting, if I go to a career center and I see a job posting and I get the job, how do you know that I got the job? Oh, <laughs> I, I'm so, that is one of the difficult data points that we spend a lot of time trying to get. Um, because we have to work with our employers for them to report back that information or it, we have to work with the students to try and get that information. Um, these both parties are very busy and it's a challenging number to get that feedback from the employers. And this is, uh, this is a number that challenges universities across the United States. It's consistently talked about within our professional association, the National, College, National Association for Colleges and Employers. Um, some of us that have the time, um, we may data mine LinkedIn to see what our students are doing we, um, because we can't through our, um, our career service management systems, we do have information on who may have applied to the job so we can follow up with the employer that way. So there's different data mining techniques that we can use if they're not responding to a survey or an email. Um, I think everybody can appreciate that we're over surveyed in many cases, so getting the response rate can be difficult. Um, but we are definitely working diligently to try and get that information. So th there were surveys that were administered to certificate and associate graduates from 2005-06 through 2014-15, and it included a question asking how helpful certain services such as job postings and career counseling uh, at their campus career centers was in assisting them to respond and obtain a job. But that question was removed, so can you explain why that question was not included in the survey for 2015-16 and 2016-17. Um, and without that question in your data, how do you plan to capture that kind of information? Chair Barron, is, is that the CUNY Student Experience Survey? Yes. Not, no. no. Which one is that? Yeah. One second. Sure. Okay, it's the CUNY Survey of Certificate and Associate Graduates 2016-17. Okay, so it was not included for the 16-17, but it's a CUNY uh, Survey of Certificate and Associate, gra uh, Associate list of tables. It's a part of your tables. I see. I think we'll have to get back to you. I, I think what... Um, uh, Vice Chancellor Rosa was talking about is that every two years there's a student experience survey mm -hmm. um, that's administered with uh, many, many questions across the kind of entire academic experience, including career services. And um, I believe that those, uh, those still have a number of questions around career services, around the engagement, around the experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're looking at something different. So okay. we can provide so we'll, you. We'll send it to you so with, we, can, um, with what we, we can know be, to exist. We can be more informed about that. So do you see the attempt, the RFP that has yet to be released, but which is in the stages of being developed, do you think that that's going to help address any discrepancies that exist between the different uh, campuses? 
we, so that we, students can be able to, all students, regardless of the campus that they're at, will have access to uh, a comprehensive services? We do, Chair Barron. I'm gonna yield to my colleague, Dean okay. Kamath, on it, but uh, that's the idea is cuts to the heart of the very challenge that you, that you pointed out in your remarks about the need to leverage the university in its totality mm -hmm. um, to better connect students with uh, a full range of available employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. Right, um, thank you. Thank and you. so I think that um, the activities that I was describing, um, I sit within the Office of Academic Affairs. And so I think that um, what we know from the, um, the National Association from the national data that Zena and Katie referenced is that um, the idea of kind of really good preparation for students so that they get to graduate with a good job and good economic uh, prospects is really not just the career services kind of mandate and sole responsibility. We are working very, very closely on the academic side. So when we think about who has access to students, faculty, their faculty advisors, a lot of the work that's happening in the classroom, um, the connectivity to kind of what they're learning and kind of what that um, set of learnings could actually translate to a job. And so I think that what we're trying to do, um, there's no silver bullet um, to answer your question directly. Um, a system, a technology tool will not, um, you know, be the one thing that kind of launches our students into academic and, and career success. But we think it's incredibly important um, to have an ability to measure. The system that we will be procuring um, will be one that can be accessed by faculty. So that as faculty are often connecting our students to internships, we can have an ability to track that so that the activities of career services alone um, is not the only indicator of kind of career success. And I think that's the big sea change that's happening both nationally and that we are trying to really institute at CUNY. Um, it feels, again, from where I sit, not quite fair to kind of level all of the outcomes of students and their careers on um, a four-person career services offices. They do um, a whole lot and incredibly important. They're sort of the nexus of activity on a campus, but we have to absolutely involve the academic side as well, and that's kind of what we're doing. And a technology tool will try to marry up experiential learning, course taking, credential and badging, certificates with the career services activities, with mentoring, with leadership, so that there's a whole package for students, whether they're at a community college or a senior college. It's not uncomplicated, but it is sort of what we're trying to build. If I could just add, the other thing is we're really trying to meet the students where they are. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's almost a fear to come into a career center or to come to a professional um, with technology these days. Students don't want to do that. They want to have access where they are. They want to have access on their phones. They want to have access at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and and we've, we're seeing that. So we really are trying to make it easier for the students to access the services that we all have to offer. And we feel that this, this technology, this, this RFP that we're, we're procuring right now will allow for, for more students to access the system. Um, you know, students are telling us this. We know. They come to the career fairs, uh, but they're, they're running off to a job in, in 15 minutes. Or they're running back home because they have a child. So we're really trying to make the services as accessible as possible for them. And we know that this tool that we, we, we currently have but we're expanding on will allow for more of that. And it will allow you to capture the number of students who are up at 3 a.m. doing their papers. Oh, yeah. yes. Absolutely. And, and mm -hmm. tell the hat that, you, that they've wanted access to the career center. Yes. And, and that's mm -hmm. actually the beauty of it because I in real terms, it's helping our campuses with digital case management, but mm -hmm. it's also a, a great way to collect data on efforts to outcomes. Mm -hmm. And that's our hope, that it will, it will reside mm -hmm. in one place and it'll give us tremendous analytical capability to, mm -hmm. to demonstrate the efficacy of the various efforts that we're expending on behalf of linking students to successful careers. Is there a way that you can give us the average cost per student at each of these sites? What's the average cost based on the number of students that are in fact now using your services? What's the average cost per student? I, I don't have that number in front of me. Um, I, we do have that number included in our survey and we can provide that to you. Okay, that's good. Um, do you have a timeline as to when the RFP will be released and when the response will be able, 
when can we expect to see this more comprehensive tool available to students generally? Or um, I can take a stab at that, um, mm -hmm. and I'm sure my procurement and legal folks <laughs> will um, uh, are listening in intently. I mean, I think um, similar to we're, we're a public entity, right? So I think our procurement cycles from the moment an RFP um, sort of hits the street, so to speak, one can imagine between all of the kind of contracting steps and registration and training, it's about a 12 month process. So we think and hope that we're a few, um, you know, within one to three months away from it hitting the street. And then a typical procurement cycle will be anywhere between 12 months, you know, if everything goes well, 18 months, again, if there's complications for whatever in terms of implementation or, or procurement. So, um, you know, I think if we want to be really conservative, within 24 months, we should have a, a full implementation. But again, our legal and procurement folks, it's, it's um, there, are, there are a number of changes along the way. But I think within, um, you know, the next year or two, again, I think that this, um, it's not that nothing is happening, um, all of the, the, the campuses use technology, but I think we want to try to, you know, under, as Chris was describing, have a centralized um, mechanism for more reporting versus going out to each of the colleges to collect that analytics. So again, I think we can get the analytics today. We can get it more easily with a centralized system. Yes. Yes. In terms of the programs that you mentioned that are, that offer internships, um, and you cited several, I think you talked about the Clinton program and NYCHA and 311 and others. Do you have a number of the, of the students who have been placed in internships based on their going through CUNY? Do you have that number for the different programs? So I certainly, um, I oversee the CUNY Service Corps program, the CUNY Cultural Corps program, and the CUNY Internship program, which is a um, program that places uh, through a partnership with DOIT and HRA and about 17 city agencies, um, individuals into IT and communications jobs. So we have a number uh, for that. Um, hold on, I actually have that in front of me. Um, in terms of uh, this, um, let's say calendar year 2017, um, we had 2,400 students in the variety of internship programs that my office oversees. Um, that is not going to be clear. I think, um, Katie, from your work with the survey, would have um, an additional number of individuals who are placed in internships in campus-specific programs. My 2,487 students are for what we call centrally managed internship programs. Um, so again, it's, it's a big team effort here with um, college specific um, opportunities and then some opportunities that we run centrally so that students across many campuses can access versus having to um, be uh, kind of situated within one campus. 2,487 two, 2, students. How long is the internship and are they paid internships and what's the... Uh, so yes, we very much uh, believe in paid internships and that's, a very, that's every single one of those students is in a paid internship mm -hmm. at minimum wage typically, though some of our internships, particularly with our city agencies, tend to be above uh, minimum wage. Um, and the average duration uh, varies. CUNY Service Corps, for example, is a 240-hour internship um, between essentially October and May. Uh, same thing with CUNY Cultural Corps. The average duration for our CUNY internship program, which is the program that um, staffs not only the call centers that you mentioned, but 17 other city agencies in IT related roles, um, average duration is about 12 months for those programs, and they're all part times. So they average between 15 to 20 hours a week. So, long way to say it depends, but we are very interested in these, particularly the centrally managed programs, that they're paid, that they're meaningful, that they have a substantive number of hours, um, and that they're a substantive kind of um, not only work experience, but an income generator as well as a real career exploration opportunity for folks to learn about a sector. Is it one and done, or can a student apply again for a subsequent cycle? Um, so again, it depends on the program. Uh, for our CUNY Service Corps, that tends to be um, an experience that you can take advantage of once. What we do see um, from uh, surveying our employers and our students is that probably about 35% of students who um, take part in our structured internship program in the Service Corps example, um, do carry on where they get hired directly by the um, by the entity, by the employer. What percentage did you say? About, um, depending on the year, about right. 33 to 40 percent. 
So there is continuation. So again, a, a really good successful career exploration program would be one where a student tries it out and then it works mutually on both sides and they get hired on directly. Um, for students in the um, public sector internship programs, they actually can uh, be in the program for up to three years. Um, and so we see many students who kind of take advantage of um, those internship programs for the duration of their, their academic experience. Um, and then uh, finally for the um, cultural core program, that's really a diversity pipeline program. So we tend to offer those to students who are in their final year um, uh, so that you know, if it works out and if it was um, kind of mutually beneficial and the opportunity arose, folks could be hired on full time. So again, I, I um, don't speak for every single internship program at the university. Those are just typically the ones that we manage centrally. And um, Katie, I don't know if there's anything else from the college specific level to add. Um, Yes, we do have each, I believe it was 60% of the colleges reported that they have an internship program that they manage. Um, we do have a number um, as to how many um, students have been served in those programs, which we can provide you with. Do colleges have uh, programs where they have student tutors that they hire as well, and does that relate to this, or is that a separate program that that would be separate from the career services area okay do you have any relationship with them um, are you are you talking are you referring to our tutoring centers not necessarily tutoring centers but do colleges have an opportunity for yes let's let's do both of them let's start with the tutoring centers since okay so we will partner with tutoring centers that are on campus because sometimes a student will go to a writing center for resume or cover letter help, and then they get some assistance there, but they're normally directed to career services um, for further assistance. And, um, and, and I can add it to really, um, Good point, and I think that you know both at CUNY and nationally, um, uh, peer mentoring, kind of near peer mentoring and counseling is incredibly important and a great leadership opportunity for upperclassmen to kind of coach um, and mentor, or often give kind of direct services. And so I, the example that comes to mind quickly is Gutman Community College has a really strong um, peer mentoring program as one example, and I really, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think most campuses have some version of peer mentoring, those tend to be program specific. So they might be tutoring, which would kind of be an academic affairs area. Uh, could be around student success if there's a college completion or kind of graduation program. Um, it could be uh, related to um, kind of affinity groups or kind of mentoring around um, women in technology, for example, or kind of other groups. Um, so that is you know, typically driven out of an academic affairs office for a particular program or opportunity. And again, I think that those um, are driven from um, kind of in collaboration with career services, but probably pretty separately. And is there any financial remuneration that's associated with that as well? Do for the know? programs that I was speaking of, those are all paid. And for the peer mentoring program? Typically, I mean, those are, that, that's a job. Yeah, it's a job description where okay. folks are, are interviewed <coughs> and, um, and hired for their, their capability and their ability and their expectations. Um, uh, expected out of folks. Um, and again, some of those might tap into federal work study dollars, and then some might just be program specific where there's a foundation or a budget that is, you know, the, the funder behind um, the paid opportunity. Okay, so CUNY's webpage, <coughs> excuse me, for its Office of Int Institutional Research includes surveys of CUNY baccalaureate and certificate association graduates. We referenced it a little while ago. But the latest data available for baccalaureate graduates is for the 2009-2010 cohort. Uh, while there's data for 2016-17 for, for the certificate and associate graduates. So what has been the delay in publishing more recent data for the baccalaureate graduates online? No, Office of Institution. I think it's the surveys that you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we would want to okay. get more information. I, I mean, I, I, I believe um, there are a lot of updated kind of okay. data um, uh, reports that are, you know, for the 2016, 2017 graduates. So I think mm -hmm. we just would want to understand exactly what you're looking at to okay. understand what the delay right. was. But 
Um, I know certainly from the student experience survey, the um, performance uh, monitoring um, mm -hmm. program, PMP, those mm -hmm. are all updated, updated, I think, yeah. as of the 2017 okay. cohort. So we can send you the mm -hmm. report that we're mm -hmm. looking at. You can look at that. Okay. I see that there. Yeah. Okay, is there, is there a difference between what you call uh, career centers and offices of career services? Is there a distinction, or is it just a different title? Just a different title. Okay, so there we go. Um, well, I think that's, you've given a lot of information. I do appreciate it, and uh, if you could just get back, the council will be able to list those questions for you. I do want to know how many students are uh, we were placed at 311 at NYCHA. You certainly can use more students at NYCHA to, <laughs> to record some of the complaints that come in through there and help facilitate resolution of that. But I'd be interested in the numbers as well, you know. And uh, thank you. Do you have any other comments that you'd like to offer? We just appreciate your, your leadership to make sure that all of our areas, particularly career services, are, are resourced well enough to be able to uh, benefit our students richly. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who has testimony that they'd like to offer? We don't have any further slips. If not, we will adjourn this hearing. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.